We see a narrative shift here from negative inflation momentum without negative growth news, um, which has been a great story for markets, and, and that's been a story up until kind of a month or two ago, to essentially a bit less negative inflation momentum and, and a bit more negative growth momentum. So, so you could argue that initially the, the, the kind of inflation coming down was a good thing for markets, yeah. whereas now you, you're absolutely right. You're starting to see U.S. macro surprises, retail sales, consumer confidence, some of the labor market data softening. So that could definitely trigger uh, more rate cuts. And I think our economists are convinced that um, if there is a problem in the economy on the growth side, the Fed could be very reactive to it. But the problem is markets might not necessarily see this as good of a story. Yeah, I love your recent publications also looking at the risk appetite indicator. And sometimes, it's, even if you look at gold and what equities are doing, there's a mismatch, right, in how market inter is interpreting some of the data. Where do you see the biggest opportunities now? Well, that, that is exactly right. I think if you look at the risk appetite indicator, and this aggregates 27 risk premium and pair trades across assets, so it gives you a very broad read how bullish or bearish investors are. It's shifted to the upper end of the range since the 90s. So you've seen a major relief rally, again, I think, triggered by rates uh, more than by growth and and that sets you up for a bit of a difficult summer if that makes sense and if I benchmark um, the first principal component which extracts growth information from that risk appetite indicator to the recent macro surprises there's a big gap actually one of the biggest gaps we've seen in a long time so in other words the market and the optimism in the market currently is disregarding the fact that the growth in the US has disappointed a bit recently maybe because it's again expecting the Fed to turn more but we're not seeing that right now. So, uh, Christian, is a mismatch for U.S. equities in general, or is this across the board? So this is actually global, but um, I think our team in the U.S. have highlighted that the gap is particularly large between like cyclicals versus defenses and some of the data we're getting. It's a global phenomenon, though. I think, um, importantly, uh, if you look at global macro surprises, they've been tailing off a bit as well, but it's really the U.S. I think in the U.S. it's been the sharpest uh, decline in our macro surprise index. But it, would you go as far as saying as this is actually a bear signal so that we'll see a correction in parts of the markets or could, could this be a, a wider spread correction? I would say it's certainly a bit early to call for correction. I mean, these risk appetite indicators, first of all, they're not at the absolute extremes. They still have a bit of run uh, way. And I think the other thing is generally what we find with any sentiment and positioning indicator, they're a very good contrarian signal when they're really bearish. So yeah. when everyone is bearish, you want to be bullish. But when everyone is bullish, you don't necessarily want to be bearish. You want to see how the macro narrative, the macro picture evolves. It's gotten a bit weaker recently, but just to be clear, house view from us is still, it's a bit of a blip and broadly the growth remains solid. So we're not calling for a big correction, but we certainly wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of a consolidation. But so, what, so in terms of investment or portfolio building, do you sit on the sidelines or go to cash for parts of it until you see a couple of inflation and, and prints? It's a really tricky thing right now. You, you make a very good question there. I think when, le when you're late cycle, you've got to be very careful to shift to cash too early. And we are a bit late cycle, so we, we generally recommend people to stay invested, maybe raise a bit of cash, but I think there's a lot of focus on diversification because if you actually see something going wrong in the economy the bond market will probably help you a bit more um, so we neutral bonds we're overweight equity but I think the other thing is hedging because of this extreme kind of risk appetite pickup the VIX has just made a new low um, since since the COVID crisis so hedges are cheap mm -hmm. so that helps you to get through potentially a volatile summer and all the things that you that you get there